Okay, folks. Um, we will call our first, our only March meeting to order. We'll start with a roll call. Steve Dahl. Here. Brandon Farrell. Here. Jeremiah. Jim Raymond. Here. Matt Towns. Yeah. Yeah. Here. 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 Okay, great. Um, first up, I think Mr. Dupuis is going to get us going. Good. All, right, try now. All right, there's a few uh, coaches and, and kids that couldn't make it tonight. They had other prior commitments. Some spring seasons have started. So just wanted to touch base on some of them. Um, gymnastics. So I want to start off by recognizing gymnastics and the accomplishments of Ireland Olstead. Ireland is a senior this year and has had an amazing gymnastics career and season. This year, she has been recognized for the following. First team All-State on the bars. First team in the Badger Conference on the bars, beams, and all around. An honorable mention in the Badger Conference on the floor. Congrats to Ireland and the team on their accomplishments this year. Um, if you followed her throughout her career, she's done some amazing things in the co-op um, with Melton. So congrats to her. Second, I want to recognize our boys swim team. And senior Liam Punzel. Liam broke numerous school records the last couple of years, including the 50-meter freestyle and 100-meter fly. The coaching staff and the youth continue to build opportunities to allow students access to the pool. They have some upcoming swim clinics that they're excited about running um, to look to continue to grow the program. Thanks to the coaching staff and congrats to Liam and the team. Dance. Um, 2022 was a great season for the varsity girls dance team. While the team was small in size, it was mighty in stature. Made up of all upperclassmen, one senior and six juniors, the team was composed of all returning athletes. Having a well-tenured team made for lots of routines, great bonding, and some real improvement. The team focused on technique, more advanced skills, and creative ways to maximize performances. We held our second annual recital at the end of the season to showcase our routines and accomplishments. Our end of the season recital is something we will continue to grow, expand, and create in the years to come. We held our most successful dance team clinic fundraiser this past January with almost 60 children in attendance. The team had a blast. We helped groom future dancers and earned money to buy equipment. We have plans to recruit underclassmen to join our team and to grow our numbers even more. Our goals for next year also include participating in local competitions, community service, and having even more performances. We look forward to another successful season in 2023. So congrats to the coaching staff and the dance team. Cheer, this year varsity basketball cheerleading squad had seven girls on the team, which consisted of five freshmen and two junior, juniors. The girls learned over 100 cheers and 22 different pep. Building and building our individual mental health. So those were um, some groups that were not unable to attend tonight. Again, um, Kudos to them. I thank the coaches at our end of the year meetings on the accomplishments they had, um, what we're looking to build with leadership and mental health, um, and also through our strength and conditioning program to give our kids opportunities to be successful um, in the areas that they love. So for those that are here, um, we'll talk about boys basketball a little bit, followed by wrestling, and then Coach Jenny is unable to be here till about 7.30. So we might have to transition into something else and then come back when he shows up, if that's okay. Um, boys basketball, I'd like to introduce Coach Fox and some of the boys basketball players. Coach Fox continues to do an amazing job. Although we were young and at times physically outmatched on the court, we managed to come up with some big victories at the end of the season that helped us finish 500 in conference play. I'm really looking forward to 
um, the future of this program. Um, Coach Fox always does really well at getting the most out of the players that he has. And at times, if you came to games, we did sophomore that played. Um, and so hopefully that continues to grow into success moving forward. Um, followed with some of the seniors that we had um, were great to play. So I'm going to bring them up here and let him talk about some of those boys and the, the basketball program. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, that, that was uh, actually an understatement that, w that we were small and young. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, we were much better by the end of the year, which is what I expect our guys to do because they always work so hard. Uh, we had three guys make the all-conference team. First off, Peter Hazeltine's not here tonight. He's on vacation. Um, <clears throat> we, we have year-end meetings. We, we have them with, we call them exit interviews with our guys. And and my, my I always start them out with, how do you feel like you, how this year went to Peter? And and he looked at me and he said, I was really surprised how much I played. And uh, and, and so, so that, I mean, that, that was good. But, but he earned it. He, he His defense was awesome. That's, he got it. He only scored two points a game. He didn't get on the all-conference team by by having gaudy numbers. He played defense and and uh, and and a stat we take a lot of pride in is taking charges. He took 15 charges this year. The whole rest of our team, these guys included, um, only took seven. So more, more than double for the whole rest of the team. So look at Peter's a junior. Looking forward to having him back. Uh, Leighton McKillops here is a sophomore for us. Leighton had a had a tough start. He had he had some knee issues at the start of the year, and and then he had a couple, or more than a couple, bouts with uh, COVID close contact where he had to to sit and miss out. So the the start of the year was really bumpy. Uh, Leighton only played in 16 games for us, 16 out of 25, and still made the all conference team. Uh, and that tells you how much he contributed while he was actually in there. Um, Leighton shot 44% from three point range this year. So um, between uh, Connor and Layton and, and Pre Preston Schaffner, we had a really, really, uh, really nice outside shooting team. Uh, and then last but not least, of course, is Connor, our senior. Um, so we finished nine and nine in conference, seventh place, which I'm actually, I'm actually really pleased with that. Uh, not with the seventh place, but with the nine and nine conference, the, the, the Connor was the third leading vote getter in the whole conference for the whole conference team against two guys that are unbelievable. Okay. So the fact that, that he was the third, he had the respect of the whole rest of the conference that he's the third leading conference vote getter for a team that finished seventh is, is pretty unheard of. Um, uh, Connor's gonna go play at Boyd College. If you guys didn't know that, so um, that will have we'll have four guys in our program playing college basketball, with with more younger guys that still want to play as well. Looking forward to that. I think that's a testament to our program too. So uh, I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm proud of the season that we had. We didn't, we didn't have uh, it, it wasn't measured in wins as much as what we have been in the past. And and we're gonna get over Blake Turner. Um, we're gonna take care. We're gonna take care of that coming up. So, uh, all right, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah. So that's all I got. Thank you. Yeah, Connor was one of. Uh, seven student athletes that are, are going on to the next level. We had our signing day the other day and uh, it was, it was, it was a little bit more exciting this year because usually in the past, you know, we've had four or five kids from one sport that have went on. And I think, you know, throughout our seven, um, we had a variety this year and that's just a testament to, to what we're doing throughout our programs in general and as, as athletes um, in general. So, um, I'm I'm a boy college alum, so I was excited to hear uh, when Connor was going there as well. So now on to wrestling. Uh, I was extremely excited when we had the opportunity to get Coach Law back on the mat as our head wrestling coach. Craig brings a vast array of knowledge and understanding to the sport. I believe this team made the most games this season from the start to the end of the year. Um, his first dual match, I know how much of a competitor he is, and uh, – we ended up didn't come on the, the right end of that stick. And I was talking to his wife afterwards a little bit. And I said, 
give it some time, give it some time. We beat that team at the end of the year and, and those types of things. And, and when we wrestled at the end of the year, we were a different team than the beginning of the year. So that's a testament to him um, and his coaching staff. I always get goosebumps when we host uh, home home wrestling meets, dual meets, and and we turn that spotlight on and we come charging out of our locker room. I think that's one of the coolest experiences um, that we have here. So um, please get to some wrestling meets if you haven't and, and experience that. But again, I just appreciate Craig and his hard work and his dedication to, to these kids and getting them ready to compete. So I'm going to let him talk about a few of his kids. One up, Cruz. So uh, Jim was was at our banquet uh, yesterday we had, and we include our, our youth, our middle school and our high school all with kind of in the same banquet, which is just kind of a neat um, tradition that we have here. Um, and I think Mr. Dupuy said it best. I, I um, probably wasn't in my lifetime goal of, of coming back to be a head coach again after a, a stint of from 1995 through 2012 and in, in, in a different school doing this. But um, I appreciate it, honestly, the, the, the school board, the administration, and I'll say Dr. Pauly, Dr. Coombs for, for actually allow me to come back and to do something that, that I, I truly have a passion for. Um, and, and it just allows you to get to know the students at a whole different level. Uh, I, I am very competitive, and these guys found that out. Um, I, I don't like to lose, but but at the same point in time, the whole purpose why we're there, and as all coaches, and, and Coach Fox is a great example of that, is is to make sure that we, we help our kids achieve their goals. Um, and, and I told them from the beginning of the year, it, it's certainly not about me. This is about you. What are your goals? What do you want to achieve? And, and it's my job to make sure that we can achieve whatever goals that you want. So um, these three guys here, um, we, we did make some <clears throat> some great improvements. We only compete in 14 different events throughout the year, so that's all we have. Um, and kind of as, as Coach talked about, um, we wrestle five of our conference duels in one night uh, in, in the RVC conference duels um, out of our nine uh, schools that, that wrestle in our conference. And so we had five on one night. Well, that particular night, how many people did we have out on COVID? protocol um it, it was too many let's just put it that way so it was tough to wrestle over half of your conference duels in one evening without four or five of your starters um but we we battled we bounced back um we finished just under 500 my, my goal for us as a, as a young team last year i think we we had uh, 10 or 11 kids the first thing is is you got to get your numbers up uh, i was happy that we had 22 kids on our team this year so we doubled the size but with the 22 kids you can probably imagine that some of them hadn't stepped on the mat a lot before which then also added to a little bit of um difficulty that when you step on the mat for the first time on a varsity level sometimes you get humbled really quickly um and and wrestling is a humbling sport to begin with but Super proud of the way the team went, super proud of the accomplishments that eventually um, and, and the growth that we had throughout the year. So three of, uh, of the of our 14 weight classes were um, recognized as, as all conference, which is great. Uh, so I'll start out with uh, Ethan first. So Ethan is only a sophomore, um, did a great job for us, wrestled anywhere between, you know, Weighing in at 175, but wrestling the 182 weight class, 195 weight class, um, bounced them around basically wherever we kind of needed to, to to basically to be the most competitive we could be as a team. Um, Ethan was second team all conference. For wrestling, the way that it works is that um, really how you finish in the conference tournament. If you win the conference tournament, your first team all conference, second team all conference. Um, and so if you don't have your best day at the conference tournament, you could be on the outside looking in, even though you're, 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 you've been pretty competitive all year long. Um, so Ethan's loss at the conference tournament, Ethan took second at 182. Ethan's loss at the conference tournament was to a pretty good kid who ended up 54 and 0 and a state champ. Um, so, so his one loss at the conference tournament was uh, to kind of a quality kid. Um, and so took second in our conference, unbelievable um, conference tournament that he had um, come back on, and uh, wrestled well at regionals as well. So only a sophomore expecting big things out of Ethan coming back. So um, congratulations to Ethan. Next, we have uh, Bo Allison. Bo is only a junior. Um, Bo, again, kind of bumped around a little bit, depending upon where I thought that we could score points at and where we needed points. So wrestled at 160 and 170. Um, again, you get into some pretty big boys um, that, that like to throw some things around. Um, also at uh, 170, we had some some pretty good kids that were multiple time state place finishers um, coming out of there. 
Um, and and so Bo was our only sectional qualifier. Um, was six and two in a conference, but two and two in a conference tournament. So uh, was recognized by all the coaches as an honorable mention. Um, and again, was our only sectional qualifier. Uh, I was talking to, to Matt just a little bit earlier as we were coming in. Our sectionals is pretty good. Uh, the state champ and the state runner up for 106. Uh, the state champ and the state runner up at 113. The state champ and third place finisher at 120. Uh, 126, we are on the podium. 132 is the state champ and the state runner up. And I could keep going. Um, so our, our sectionals, if you get through our sectionals, you will be on the podium likely, um, at state tournament. So, um, Bo did a great job to get down there. And again, just, just some really stiff competition coming out of there. Uh, but, but extremely proud and he'll be back as well. Uh, our lone senior then not our own lone senior on the team. We only, we had four, uh, total on the team, but, but Gage was the only one that was recognized. Um, again, Gage just didn't have the best conference tournament. Uh, the, on that particular day, but went seven and one in duels out of our eight duels throughout the year. So in my mind was probably a, a first or second teamer for sure, uh, but came in um, fourth at the tournament and, and was just not wrestling at, at our best or we, we jumped a different weight class and tried a different weight class. Um, it didn't work out for us, and um, but it was definitely recognized by uh, all the all the coaches within our conference that he definitely is um, deserving of an all-conference honors. So um, that's the wrestling team. And again, we we bring, um, you know, 18 kids back uh, as returners and and got a good group of, of young middle school kids that uh, we're working hard with and we'll do stuff with over the summer to to continue to get keeping things going in the right direction. So that's all I got. Thanks, guys. And we kind of move on and then when Chris comes, is that OK? And we'll just kind of jump in when we can. Yeah, I think we're okay yeah. with. Uh, All right. All right. Great. Uh, Treasury report, Mr. Dahl. Uh, thanks, Pat. Uh, I went through the vouchers and I only had a question about one uh, check. Uh, it was one, two, three, six, eight, two spyglass uh, for $2,201.60. Um, and Ted got back to me earlier, but I'll just let Ted um, explain what that was for, as well as uh, you touch on the unplanned expenses. Yeah, All right. Three in total, the first two are unplanned expenses. First one recognized here is check number 12342, the Global Industrial, for $894.01. Unplanned expense for three hair dryers um, for the high school pool locker rooms. So those are all functioning at this point, okay? Yep. And on that one, next check, unplanned expense is check number 12352, the Mastercom Incorporated, for $1,292. This is unplanned expense, it's a strobe light for a middle school band room. So when the PA announcement comes on, oftentimes you can't hear the PA in the band room because of the, the kids playing the instruments, a light will still be notified that there's a PA announcement. Yeah. Last one I have is one that Steve referenced is check number 12368, the spyglass, um, for $2,201.60. Effectively, this is a telecommunications audit. We did one five years ago. A number of regional school districts participated in this. And what this company does, they come in, James works very hard coordinating with them, and they assess all of the public communication lines that are coming in the new school system to make sure that they're functioning and you're being charged for all these lines. We did it, I don't know, five years ago, James, perhaps. I thought it was three, but. My... Okay, three to five years ago. Um, and then we did another intentional run. Because after our completion of our $40.6 million capital project, this made sense. Let's run it again to see. And we can see the yearly savings, which will be our yearly savings in the future. The first year, they take anything that they save. That's kind of their assessment for running the audit. That's their skin in the game. And then it's reoccurring savings for us because these um, lines that are not functioning are no longer, we're no longer being assessed. So 
good, good outcomes on that, but that is a lot of work for James. We appreciate James and participating in that exercise. Other invoices? Uh, thank you. Uh, if there aren't any other concerns, I will uh, move to approve the both vouchers pending final audit. I'll second. Steve and Jemaya, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, great. Thanks, guys. Um, that's probably done. Okay. And I would defer right away to Dan and Eric. Yeah, so James is going to pull up our, our debt that these is outcomes. So Eric Cass, our advisor from PMA Financial, is going to jump on with us virtually here. You'll recognize Eric. He's, he's joined us a few times. And we'll let Eric highlight the results of this most recent debt that these is. Um, they set the table while James pulls it up, up and here it comes. So last year, um, we had some significant savings, about $340,000 to the taxpayer, as we debt the fees just over $700,000. This year, we're debt the fees in just right around $1.5 million. Is really so I'll hand it off to Eric, and he'll walk us through this document, and then uh, we'll just seek board approval, and we'll get this in motion for taxpayer savings. <clears throat> Hold on a quick second, Eric. Um, James, our IT specialist, is going to unmute you so, you can, so we can hear what you have to say. Very important. Thanks, James. Yeah. Sorry, I'm good. I love when technology does it. Eric is really going to stick the introduction. Full year of the identified loan. The identified loan that we're working through is the most recent $40.6 million worth of work. That is the highest interest rate at the end of the loan. So, a quick reminder what we can see up on the screen here is those numbers that are shaded in green. Those are what are called callable debts. So, when you have debt with these, what we do is we work from the bottom up on those debts. So, we can see um, the $40.6 million after debt with these that's reducing. Um, by, by a, a nice chunk of dollars in support of our taxpayers. So unfortunately, thank you, Eric, for joining us visually. Hopefully I did a good job <laughs> of reviewing your expertise. I think I did an okay job. But any questions that hopefully I can answer because Eric cannot tonight? Is there any reason not to do this? I'm really confident Eric would say no to that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, it is, it's a great <laughs> thing not only for, you know, for us to, to maintain a consistent money for our taxpayer. But also one of the savings on the income loans. Um, from the beginning, when we assess this before we set the levy, if we recall the, the, the evening before we set that levy, we go through some different scenarios in effort to produce results like this. So it's a, it's a great vehicle for us to use when appropriate, and, and we're pretty confident that we can do something similar.
to make the result. We need to make the resolution kind of just as it's worded yeah. on, the, on the agenda. So. Um, so to move the resolution that we authorize the transfer of funds, the establishment of an escrow account with respect to and the seasons of certain of the general obligation school building and improvement bond series 2019, dated March 4th, 2019. So moved. No, that was Steve. Thank you. Uh, Steve and Jim, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Great. Thanks. You can see here. Thank you for joining here. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't see Coach Jenny yet, so we'll keep moving. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, COVID update will be brief. Our numbers continue to trend lower and lower the past few weeks. We've been in single digits, low single digits. As of today, we have no active cases at all on campus. So we're moving in the right direction. So we continue to monitor that, but um, the trend is very positive. So and do we still offer testing? Yep. And that will it's, continue through? We'll continue probably through the rest of the year. Okay. Yeah. Good news is the line's been pretty slow and quiet. I'm sure they're getting some reading done. Um, the next item is really, it's a standing agenda item if the board wishes to discuss that. If not, we can move on. Is there any reasons for any of the What do you know, Derek? Anything? <coughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> you know it all. No, you've got your ears full of this, I know. County look better. I think the trend there just is that's all I suggest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the pocketbook question is what my job changed. I think I think I told everybody I'm not a federal employee. Mm -hmm. and so we have to follow the CDC guidelines to a T because there are yeah. you know partner agencies. And uh, they're bringing everybody back to work in person, not requiring masks. Um, they feel very confident everything is going in the right direction. I get updated on it pretty much daily at this point. It's all good news. We'll, we'll pay extra attention after the spring break, but right now there's nothing to indicate we'll see any type of surge like we did in January. So that is good news. Uh, strategic plan update. We are in the process of putting the strategic plan team together. Um, board members, we have three of the board members have um, committed to being a part of it. You know, if any of the rest of you wish to be a part, just let me know. We'll put you on the team. At this point, then we also have administrators. Um, we kind of landed on it'll be the cabinet, which because we meet often with our entire administrative team we feel like we can be representative of the entire team and get feedback and input when we need to staff we invited back the four staff members that participated back in 2016 all have agreed to participate which is good news and parents uh, we've reached out to three parents we've heard back from two commitments and then the business partners uh, we've reached out to two business partners one so, but we'll definitely have a placeholder for two. Um, Who are the three board members? Um, those board members want to share? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, Thanks. Yeah, good representation. The process we have set aside right now five days, and basically it's a 5 to 6.45 before the board meeting to make it, you know, less of a, giving up nights for the board members that are participating um, with consideration that they get more of an apple. We'll have to end that night a little bit sooner. But with the team that we have in place, I'm I'm convinced we'll be able to get this done in, in the five meetings that are allocated. So more to come once we get all the commitments. Then at that point, we can kind of disclose here who our team is. And our first meeting is scheduled for the next board meeting prior before that on April 11th. Moving along with that, thank you. And thank you to Kelly Lee and. Uh, next up, I we just wanted to uh, coming up in May, a couple months from now, we've got our annual gold medal scenario. We've had, had a handful of names kicked around a little bit. Um, uh, a couple uh, risen to the top, we're actually 
you know, I'm going to invite him to the town, I guess, but it came up a couple times where originally I'm going to invite Jim. And then, uh, you fill us in a little bit on every Sure. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I asked you to consider Larry and Julie Mitchell. Larry uh, was the president of IKI for uh, some time. He said that. And uh, I have graduated with uh, Julie, so I know him pretty quite well. And they have been routine contributors to the uh, Portman Endowment Series uh, here for, I'm going to probably guess 20 years. I don't know how far that goes back. But, uh, you know, when others are given 100 bucks, they're giving uh, slashed or six grand. You know, and that, honestly, Honestly, has kept that thing going forward, and uh, we're in the midst of a uh, we're in the midst of trying to reposition that so that we've got more a broader base of contributors, so it doesn't fall on people like this who have been very generous. You know, don't get me wrong, we're very generous, but we don't. You just don't have that many of those people. Whereas if we have. Uh, 40 people that give uh, you know, a thousand bucks a piece will be in great shape, but we got to get there and we're getting close. And I guess they've been giving that little talk here. But, um, at any rate, uh, it became apparent that uh, Larry and Julie had contributed for a long time and have kept that going for the Edgerton community. And this would be a way for us to recognize them in a kind of a public way. So I, don't know, I would think they'd be a, in the running. Well, I think, like I said, uh, you weren't the only one, you mentioned them first, but you weren't the only one that mentioned them. Oh, so, uh, or even the name popped up, so I, I don't know. I heard from a couple others. You know, but, uh, I don't talk about them in the kids. I don't know anything else. I don't want to say one thing up. I don't know if they motion to invite the Nipples to be our recipients. Oh, right. Well, I would do that. I would do that. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Great. <laughs> I'll second it. All right. Uh, Jim and uh, Jeremiah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Well, that's wonderful. We'll reach out to them. Uh, we've got that our protocol set up here with April in the office. So we'll talk to them. That'd be great. So we'll look forward to that. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. this is yes. Okay. Um, we've got that. Now let's uh, circle back to uh, Mr. Debris. Now that the girl basketball folks are here. All right. So girls basketball. This was my favorite team to watch this season. Um, the tenacity and pace they played with was unmatched. This led them to a 15 and 3 conference record, second place in the Rock. Um, I'm always thankful for the commitment that Chris makes to the program and his coaching staff and finding ways to connect with his team and the youth. Um, I believe this will continue to be a strong program for Edgerton uh, for many years to come. So Chris and... Well, thank you for accommodating us uh, in your schedule tonight. Um, so as Mr. Dupuy uh, stated, we had some pretty lofty expectations coming into the season. We returned a lot of our players, um, had a lot of starters coming back, and, and so that led to us being ranked in the top five most of the season. Um, we pretty much stayed steady at number four in the state in Division Three most of the season. Um, did finish with 22 wins in total, which tied the school record, um, and a lot of big wins. Uh, if you saw any of our games, um, we scored at a, a pretty high pace. We scored 70 points a game, or 70 points, over 70 points five times this season, scored over 80 points three times this season. And it's hard to confirm records when you try to go back in a time. But as far as we can do or see on our research, we did set the school record for points in one game with 89 against Turner. Um, in conference play, to give you an idea of how dominant that the girls were, um, we had a 20 point lead seven times during the course of the season. So that's in a 18 game conference season. Um, you know, that's a lot of times leading by a lot of points. Uh, we had a 30 point lead four times at halftime and we had six running clock games, which basically means the last half we were up by 40 or more points. Um, so, you know, it was, a, it was a really dominant group in conference play. 
Our average margin of victory was 23 points. We outscored teams 61 to 38, so it wasn't just about our offense. We were really proud of the defense that we played, too. Have four of the five uh, players here tonight that we want to recognize. Um, the only one missing is Abby Bloom, one of our seniors. Um, what's really unique about this group is that all four of these kids plus Abby were our captains. That's a lot of captains for a team. Um, most teams don't have five captains. They maybe have one or two. They typically pick a couple of seniors on their team. We really believe that our captains have a responsibility. It's not a reward. It's not a reward for being older. It's not a reward for being the best player on the team. It is a responsibility. Uh, they carry a lot of weight on their shoulders from a communication standpoint, from checking in with our team, from a planning standpoint. Uh, so they have a lot of responsibilities that go well beyond the playing floor. Um, great group of captains and can't wait to have two of them back next year. So real quick, I'll start with the juniors and the recognition that they received. Uh, Shannon Roosh. So um, Shani's a junior. She was named second team all conference this year. Um, obviously, she's a, a fairly tall player who's very athletic. Yeah, I keep staying tall. Um, she's very athletic, which creates a lot of headaches for other teams because they have a tough time guarding her inside and out. She runs the floor really well. Um, uh, and the second team all conference recognition was well deserved. And I think the best is yet to come with Shani. Uh, Sylvia Fox was our other junior captain. Can I say hi, Sylvia? I'm so bashful. Um, <laughs> Sylvia was named first team all conference this year. She had a great season, and you can see a certain maturity coming about her game. She averaged almost 14 points a game. Uh, she shot 39% from three point range, which led our team. Um, she had a great assist to turnover ratio and also had 54 steals on the season, which is a big number in the high school game. So she had a tremendous all around uh, season, and I look forward to having both of those two back um, next year. Hannah Zimet, one of our seniors, um, you can tell by the smile on her face, Hannah might be the nicest person you will ever meet. Um, she can absolutely light up the room with her smile and her personality, but what you don't know about her is that she's an intense competitor. Um, she turned herself into one of the best post defenders in the, in the league. Um, she had tough assignments every night. We had a lot of really good uh, post offensive players in the league. Uh, she took on that responsibility. So her stats were rather modest, uh, but because of her work on the defensive end, um, she was named Honorable Mention All-Conference this year. Uh, Abby Bloom, who's not here, um, was another one of our seniors. Abby was named Second Team All-Conference. She was probably one of the best shooters in the state. Um, the state tracks the top 10 three-point shooters uh, in Division Three, and she was in that top 10 pretty much the entire season. Um, exceptionally quick kid. Um, she's uh, committed to go to Briarcliff on a basketball scholarship, which is a Division II school in Iowa. Um, and I think uh, her best basketball is in front of her as well. And then our last senior um, is Kate Gunderson. Say hi, Kate. Yeah. So uh, Kate Gunderson, uh, four-year starter, three-year captain, um, third leading scorer in school history. Um, but probably what's more important to Kate is that she actually set the single season record for assists. So here's a senior that gave up some of her scoring for the good of the team and made sure that uh, her, her teammates were getting great shots as well. And I thought that was a great accomplishment on her part. Uh, almost 1,200 points for her career, 400 rebounds, 300 assists. Um, those are really gaudy statistics for any sort of high school player. Um, she was unanimous first team all conference for the second year in a row. And um, we got some great news yesterday too. Two of our seniors, uh, Kate and Abby, both made the Wisconsin Basketball Coaches Association All-Star Game, which is a really prestigious event um, that's held in the summer at Just a Game Fieldhouse. Uh, it's a charitable event. It, there's a few great causes that the funds go to. Uh, they'll participate in that fundraising and then participate in that All-Star Game. It is the best players from around the state, and we had two of them. So mm -hmm. we're really proud of that. So thank you for your time, and in particular, thanks to these uh, players for everything that they did for us this season. I got a couple, just a couple of things. Sure. Um, I sat with Kate at Rotary. Mm -hmm. I think it was the fourth, uh, it was early in the season. And I'll always remember you saying, uh, I said, well, how are you going to do this? How, how's it going to go? She said, well, I think we're going to be pretty good. We've had four games and we've had four uh, different leading scores in those four games. Mm -hmm. I always remember that. It's good. 
Yeah. And the other one is, are you the youngest of the Zymans? I'm not. There's one. <laughs> oh, there is one. There is. <laughs> you know, we're going to miss that family. <laughs> there's more. There, there's more. Oh, there's more. Yes. <laughs> so my dad and grandpa and I were arguing the other day. We saw the cable was the third leading scorer in school history. Who were the top two? Uh, uh, Rose Fox yeah. and Maggie Schmidt. Right. And who was the other one? Maggie, Maggie Schmidt. Schmidt. Oh, Schmidt. Ah, oh. Okay. See, I knew it. I was right. My dad we had all those blocks. Maybe we should have left Kate in a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> she was only like 30 or 40 points behind. Very small. There's Fox genes in all of those three top scores, right? Very true. Yeah. <laughs> right. right on. They can, they can fight over bragging rights. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Another reason. Another family. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, just wrap it up. Oh, just wrap it up. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Once again, I just want to thank the board uh, for allowing us to be here tonight, the coaches, the players, the maintenance staff, the workers that helped out, the tech department, the parents and the fans um, for a great winter season. Um, I thank the, uh, the staff and the district again for, for allowing me to continue to move the needle for our athletic program. So, well, time. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everyone. I got my partner here with me, Jared. We had a building the grounds meeting a couple weeks ago. It was, it was a pretty thought-provoking meeting, two hours in the books for the BNG committee, which is necessary. But so we won't go through a ton of detail here tonight. We're going to stay pretty high level. Um, Jared will get into you know the projects that we're looking at with next year. But before doing that, I just want to highlight a few things. We'll skip through the agenda. We're going to hit these anyway. Um, first is a brief overview of, of what are the financials that we have to work with. So if you look to the column to the left, um, your left, if you look at the screen there, we have our annual $250,000 capital maintenance budget. That's that's built in the budget every year, which we pull projects off our 10-year capital maintenance plan, and I'll get into in here in a moment. But because of the decision that we made with all of the contingency fund projects, um, redoing the roof and the field house, we knew that we were going to be dipping into that a little bit. So remaining out of that fund in itself is just over $134,000. On the right side is the last five years, we've leveraged you know, $350,000 of the operational um, referendum dollars to support capital maintenance projects. This year, however, we can see 22-23, um, we need to allocate $150,000 towards um, the IT department, which we reviewed about a month ago, and that allows us the remaining $200,000 in support of additional outcomes that are necessary off of that 10-year capital maintenance plan. Um, once Jared, fast forward, once Jared reviews what we're doing next year, we still have like just north of $96,000 remaining, which may support a possible Yahara furniture allocation that will hear about tonight, but we'll decide upon in April. So we've got that in mind as well. Before we get into the, the projects itself, um, did want to briefly review there was a volume of, of things that we talked about over the course of the referendum that we weren't able to get to. Um, you know, the, the, whether it was contingency or, or added items that we discussed during the referendum bidding process itself. You see all those projects listed, we've seen those before. The ones identified in red are things that we realized since coming into these buildings and, and really looking at this current year, which was a much more normal year for our kiddos, particularly at the elementary school. So two things that, that we've identified is the elementary courtyards. Um, and really we should probably do another tour over there. It's been a while, but we have two courtyards at the elementary school. We had one existing and intermediate um, that used to one time house deer, right? Is what I understand. Um, there was a, a chicken coop being kicked around for a while, but the finance guy, um, put the coffin in that one. <laughs> that being said, our, our our courtyards, whether it's the one in the intermediate side or the new one, the primary side, it's the space is not used out there, given what it is. Um, so there's some some renderings that have been accomplished and some budget plugs associated with that. The other is the elementary playground. There's a lot of great issues associated with this. 
Um, we do have some hardscape that we put in place in the primary side, uh, but there, there's, there needs to be some more attention. So we have a budget plug number in this document as well. And then the last one um, that's going to be highlighted here tonight by Al and, and his process is the student furniture and casework for the classrooms that you have. So in red are the ones that we've realized as we've um, gone about our business the last 18 months. I'm not going to get into this, but we do have a very comprehensive 10-year capital maintenance plan. We reviewed this with the Buildings and Grounds Committee um, a couple weeks ago. If you're interested in having your own version or hard copy of this, let me know. Or if you want to have access to the electronic version, that's wonderful. I will tell you it's organized in a very similar way to the one-year capital maintenance plan that Jared will review. Um, we identify all projects throughout this process that we are aware of that are in need of attention and also log and document the projects that are accomplished through a capital maintenance budget. So this is pretty comprehensive um, and really is the basis for building what Jared will walk through and that is at your table place. All right, Jared, go ahead. Thanks, Ed. All right, hello everybody. So I'm gonna talk about the 22, 23 items that we've taken off the 10 year plan that have made the list. Um, so looking at the document here, um, I'm going to start with the district. So the, basically you'll see there's a line about well, midway through the document, all the things above the line are items that have made the cut for this year. Um, any questions about any of the items in the district? Uh, next I'll move items below the line. You'll see our items that have been deferred. Um, we'll be looking at in the future. Um, how I come about Items I made it above the line are meeting with building heads, so principals and head custodians, and, and then we look at that 10 year capital document and decide what items we're going to do for our budget for this year. So, um, under high school, here is the next that uh, I'll talk about. You see there's the line again and the items above that, um, starting with recall from engine wood floor, for instance. Any questions about any of them items? When you say the line, is, the things, uh, is it the bold versus the unbold? So there's actually like a double line about a, on the high school here. So the bottom replaced oh, the pool okay. sump pump. So that's the, the bottom item on the items that we're going to be doing for this year. So, and then after the line are all the items that we'll have to be sure for now. So then we go a couple more pages to get to the middle school. Top of the list, we have a vacuum and then uh, fly finish the wood gym floor. Um, bottom on the list is the purchase of 12 and 8 foot step ladder. Any questions about any of the middle school items? All right, and then I'll move on to uh, community. For that one, we have a vacuum at the top, and uh, and then the bottom item on there, install site lighting to the back playground lot. That's just to, to help. For, uh, it's quite dark back there, so we're going to put a couple light poles in and some bigger wall packs in the building to help light that up for the inspector. Could you talk about um, the difference? Oh, sure. Absolutely. So, Kelly, what that is, is there's items on here that we end up doing every year in some cases, like uh, the wood floor recoats from the, from the gyms. That's something that we've historically have done every year. Uh, we look at the floor before we make that determination, but if it looks like it needs it, we'll, we'll do it. Um, there's some things on there that will do every so often. Um, I guess another item that's uh, quite often is like the wood chips for the playgrounds in the community in the hair schools. That's something that we do regularly. What that is is a special uh, wood chips that's shredded so it's not sharp to put around the playground equipment that we keep up to a safe level. Um, that's another good example. Some things we'll do every Number of years, like recoat the track, for instance. So you have on here um, mm -hmm. replaced concrete sidewalks. Oh, okay. Yep. 
Yeah, so that's basically, it's dependent very much so on the weather, how that, how the stuff survives. But most years, just because we have so much of it, we have to put so much money towards that. It is, yeah. We can't quite do every bit of it, but we try to find the worst of it. And, yeah. Exactly, then like the trip hazard, water running, stuff like that. Did I answer the question? Yes, yes. Good. All right, so back to community. So what made a above the line was the vacuum, the soccer wood floor recoats. Um, purchasing wood floor cleaning equipment for our wood floors is uh, we've gained them now in that building where we didn't have them before. Um, we're gonna replace a gym stairway entrance, an outside entrance to the old gym, and then the site lighting. Now the rest of the items below that line then are deferred for the time being. And then uh, next site, Next location here at Elementary, so there uh, we're looking at doing a vacuum cleaner and installing a larger doorway into the storage um, space. So that's cutting a uh, double door into a block supporting wall to help get some lunch tables in there and better access to our mechanical rooms. Any uh, questions about any of the items that we're doing here? Thanks, Jared. In, in addition to organizing all those projects, Jared and Josh and, and Aaron, they do a lot of this work themselves in-house, which not only saves a lot of money, um, but it's clearly, you know, proves a dividend with the, with the caliber of help that we have with their expertise. So, and managing all the contractors and we're looking at labor market is quite tricky as well. Um, we may partner on this one, but what we've got here is we're looking to add five fobs, key fobs. So we've had a really healthy use of, of facilities um, this year with, with the additional gym and, and the new floor and community's old gym. So what we're looking to accomplish here with our community use is get out of the key business and only get fobs for a variety of reasons. Number one, the fobs are less expensive when you have them in the hand and someone loses them. But number two, if someone loses the key, you know, technically we should be rekeying the entire environment, um, which isn't typically done. So what we're looking to do here is, is provide, we targeted specific entrances um, so specifically the high school and community to establish key fobs in all of these locations so that when we have facility users, we can give them the fob. And if somebody loses it, we just disable the fob. Or if somebody um, doesn't turn it in, we just disable the fob. It's much better managed, especially the amount of facility use that's being accomplished um, this year and, and likely in future years. So it's a celebration of our community having access to our facilities. With that being the case, in, in, in this situation here, we can apply our community service fund to this purchase because really it's specifically for community users coming into the building. Incidentally, with yes, employees have access to these fobs. Well, sure, but we technically wouldn't need to add these fobs if we didn't have so much community use, which is a good thing. So that's what we're looking to accomplish there. Any questions around key fobs? It is a very expensive proprietary business which we all should have bought stock in a number of years ago. <laughs> All right, um, last thing I wanna see, no pun intended here, is one of the, actually pun intended, right? Yeah. Um, one of the concerns that we have in regards to what's located within the capital maintenance plan is what is the expected life for our athletic field, um, particularly at the stadium? So, you know, one of the things that when we talk about at B&G, when you look at the stadium field from afar, it's the green, the grass is green, right? It looks plush, but there is zero crown on that field. Um, because of that crown, it creates a lot of user issues um, and challenges over the course of a season, especially if it's a, a rainy season, which then limits the amount of time, A, like our kids can get on the field, whether it's PE or band or what have you, um, because it's very specific to um, high school activities, i.e. football, i.e. soccer, to make sure that their field's playable for them. The unintended consequences of having a field that's really challenging, challenge to, uh, to um, maintain, in this case is now all of a sudden we're not able to allow 
our youth um, teams on this field and access it as we would like to because of the challenges associated with what, what, what that field is. So we're projecting a, a, a three, two to three year project that we need to accomplish to redo this field. We can see um, we did get a, you know, the need is for sure a natural grass option with irrigation that's that amount to a $317,000 estimate. What does that mean? So that's, that's pulling the, the field back, inserting irrigation because you can grow healthier grass with consistent irrigation throughout, regrading, sod. To maintain that field so that that's the need we got a budget number for that the desired want to eliminate all the user issues is um we consider field turf so we can see here this grassroots effort as, as i identified in the slide what we're looking to do is establish a community exploratory committee and i mean i reference soccer youth i reference football youth um there's also a band there's also the users um from all the, the sports associated with that field that we would like to invite and begin to engage what could this look like? Um, the purpose of this is if we put in, before you put in place a sad field, let's evaluate whether this is a sustainable outcome um, for our community and our youth. Specifically with the limited green space that we have on campus, there can be other advantages to going the, the field turf route. One of which is when we, when we need to pull back all of that existing turf, there's a lot of fill that comes along with it. If you've driven by Whitewater School District, um, they darn near have a bunny hill or a ski hill to the to the west of their stadium because that's all the fill that was pulled off of, off of the field but it cost dollars to haul that fill away well we've got a place for that fill i referenced the playground behind community you know there's topography concerns on the practice field here at the at the high school you know there's there's challenge it's a challenge to grow grass there so you can reallocate behind the middle school there's another issue clark knows well we've got a lot of places that we've identified if we needed to pull that fill off the field, instead of hauling it away, there's a lot of places that we can put it here to, to maintain you know, more playable green space, whether it's for um, kids during the school day, i.e. by ed, um, playground, or even after school for practices. Softball, softball diamonds are completely unplayable. It's a, it's a, you can actually play softball on, on the field. And so it's just a role all the time for kids to get out there and they play High school softball games we play a lot right on the turf football stadium fields. Yeah, spring is probably the most challenging season when it's it comes to like yeah. water yeah. when you kind of try to right. I mean when the loss starts to come out of the ground, um anybody that's ever had to deal with your line would know getting softball diamonds ready or anything of the sort, it's nothing but a mush out there and it's impossible to play. And a lot of times you do you have a beautiful nice day, but you can't play because the fields are simply aren't ready where you could actually play softball on your school. So, you know, that and among other reasons why this is a valuable effort just to, to explore. Um, I think it's just shy of 25% of, of high school fields have field turf in place right now in the state of Wisconsin, which is fascinating. Um, but there's that many field turf um, applications within the state at high school level. Comes with a significant price tag though. Um, so that's the purpose of this grassroots effort. So we've identified a, a volume of people um, that we believe may be interested in participating in this committee. You know, certainly our email list isn't all inclusive, so we're encouraging those people that are on the email list if they've got people that they associate with that might have interest in, in going through this exploration with us. We're going to invite as many people as we can looking to launch this committee this spring and learn a little bit about it and its associated outcomes to see if it's a worthy effort for us to consider. I anticipate that you'll hear from this committee sometime in, in July. a good idea and we should begin to, to consider perhaps a fundraising effort to get the ball in motion, pun intended, in support of um, more playable green space here on campus. So that's just a, a, a grassroots launch that we're looking to accomplish. Um, any questions? On the anticipated yeah, so an email is going out tomorrow morning um, and We've locked in our first date that we'll communicate tomorrow. And we're going to meet in here with as many people that want to participate. I got the date that's going to be coming out tomorrow morning. It's April. It's April, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Thank you, Jim. I got you in the email. Okay. Along with the rest of the BNG committee meeting. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Hey, Doc, you're still up there. All right. So, um, I do have a slide, but we're not going to spend a ton of time on, on doing the slides. We do.
stuff before. So there's a, a series of decisions that we're looking to make tonight. Um, so they're going to be kind of coming at you here in a, in a few moments. If there's any decision that the board has questions on or wants more information and we need to table the decision, we've got four total decisions tonight. We certainly can do that. Um, the reason why it's coming before you today is just, you know, number one, we, we believe that they're, they're pretty easy decisions. However, if there's, there's questions we want to handle those, um, one of the, the positions that the elementary we're talking about, there's a lot of dominoes that would fall with this because this is an internal posting only because if we remember, we're looking to reallocate staff in support of the effort. So knowing sooner allows our elementary team members um, to, to begin to, to kick the tires on, on what, what direction that's going to go. So the first one approval I have is, if we re this is the same slide that we, re we reviewed at the board of that budget workshop. So we can see the left, those are all the special services stipends that have been in place, you know, clubs have been in place for three years that have shown and demonstrated sustainability for just over $8,200. And then um, some ancillary comp assessment that we did, one item that was identified is our summer school pay. That would be our the teacher pay for our summer school classes, going from $23 an hour to $25 an hour. So the first decision I'd like to get, I'd like to suggest is approving the advisor stipends, and this is to go into effect next year. Sorry. Can I do a question? Go ahead. Yes. Um, my question is, um, can you, okay, so how did you come up with the variations of pay for each of these? Because they're not consistent. Yeah, great question. So I'll hand that one off to Mark, because the majority of these are the high school. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, some factors that we're taking into consideration is, are they year long? How often do they meet per week? Um, do they meet, uh, do they have weekend field trips, overnight field trips? All of that was taken into consideration. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it really was the, the, the length. We take a couple of look at fishing club, that's a winter um, activity, so if it doesn't, it's not regular fishing, it's ice fishing, but they have, I think, three or four weekends um, that they spend up north. Um, so that takes just more time out of the contract um, type hours. Coastal Week in Exchange, <clears throat> there is some fundraising and stuff like that, but um, that's the coordination of the Coastal Week in Exchange. So trying to be uh, cognizant of the time outside of this uh, the schedule. German Exchange, similar. Drama Club. Um, they all drama, drama clubs in all year long. So they meet, um, they don't have the weekends and stuff, but they have, it's an all year long um, club. So. This is different from the musical and the play. So this is the club. And yeah, the musical. Musical. There's actually multiple contracts under the musical because you have your lighting, your stage crew, all of that. You have multiple under the play. This is the actual club that is part of the, the school. I believe Jess Ike said it's still the, the drama club advisor. And then in terms of the criteria for getting this advisor level, compensation, they if we vote on this, are we voting on this that you will make that decision going forward, that when that happens, or that it's going to come to us again, and say there are the additional parts or five that come up that are basically on two years and we're going to tell us. So, yeah, so these would, we hope these maintain, and let's say that we have some clubs now that are in our special services contract, set of contracts, that at times become unfilled because nobody does it. It just kind of exists. So this is coming to the board because these are going to be added to the fleet of all clubs. If we have two more clubs that have demonstrated viability, you know, for a period of time, it's going to be just like this. We wouldn't add clubs to this list without board approval. It, it just puts in some parameters for us because, you know, there's a lot of things that our folks want to do, but we want to demonstrate that it's sustainable and that's the whole thing. And so I think I'm answering the question. That's just for these clubs. If we have future ones, we'll come, on, we'll, we'll come back to it. Yeah, so we have buildings to 
drive, building principals drive that because they know what's happening in their in their buildings. Um, so the building principals are in touch with what sort of activities are happening. And so then, that people know, yeah. you know why some people might be getting. Yeah. Right. So I just want that. To the biggest thing is is this is the first time we've done this. This used to be way back a negotiated um, item within the the uh, bargaining agreement. There was a specific bucket established for special services, which based on how the dynamics of negotiations work, typically that was never touched or nothing was ever added. This is, we believe this is much more open to provide credence to those individuals that are doing these things for multiple years. And it's the first time that we've done this and we've talked about it administratively, like you know, we've had well, these clubs right here. I mean, they've been in place for a long time. Some have come before this board, time to compensate them. So we'll evaluate it every year uh, because there may be some that, that, that by design support the effort a few year more years and, and you'll see one of our principles and we put putting a number to it. Ted, can I just add that I'm gonna give you a quick history in about yeah. 30 seconds. But yeah. this goes back to when Ken Williams was here, the superintendent just prior to 1988. And the system then was if you wanted to if you were a teacher and you wanted to have something new, you had to agree to do it for nothing. You pay were paid nothing that first year. And then once you were paid nothing and it was, you know, you got through the year, then you could apply and see whether or not they would approve it, but they didn't pay anything. And that was this way of limiting the number of people that came out because the first year you knew you weren't going to pay anything. So if you had a new sport, you had anything. We didn't give you anything, any yeah. compensation for that. And then it went to a, a committee. Yes, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That special, special services committee. Special services made committee. Made up of staff. Yes. yes, and and they were they were tough. Yeah, because it came out of the contract. Because it was out, out came out of the union contract. They sucked. They took that number and subtracted it from the total. So, you know, teachers didn't want, you know, the sports people getting paid too much. They paid them seven bucks an hour. Yeah. Well, and I can't speak for all these clubs, but a lot of them that I'm familiar with, it just doesn't cover the. Yeah. The oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean. Some of them don't even cover gas money. So. It's seven, it's seven bucks an hour now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> similar, right? A lot of our coaching conferences are the same way, right? If we really took the number of hours, that even coaches that spoke here tonight, with it pales in comparison to what they're actually written in. Thank you. Yes, yep, you bet. So of all of these four things that we're approving, what's the total cost? Okay, so, well, all right. So the, the clubs is $8,250. All right, the increase at hourly rate for for summer school projects at $6,000. That's a year, this is both a year. And then the other one, this one here is essentially cost neutral. This is what Al will talk about here in a moment. This is cost neutral, well, after Mark said Jenna, I think, um, because that's a reallocation of staff. Yeah, am I, am I hitting your question? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah, got it. All right, awesome. Thank you. The next agenda item is approving summer school. This is actually to make us um, a little bit more to market this current year. So we're voting on this current year and next year on this particular item. Second. Eric, Jim, all those in favor? Aye. Next, I think the next agenda item is L. Right? Yeah. 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 Right. Awesome. We are excited to be here tonight to uh, ask for your approval to create this K5 social emotional learning coordinator. Uh, I feel weird, Jim, that you're back over there and I can't see you. Thanks. Uh, he misses you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this position would really be a kind of a forward thinking, problem solving uh, type of position. Focusing really on building our school culture and helping our students feel uh, welcomed and uh, provide them with the skills uh, to be successful learners at um, you know all three of our elementary schools, the primary school, the intermediate school, and Gehera. Um, we feel it's, it's going to be a really uh, value added for this, this coming school year. Uh, we have our timeline there. We'll definitely look at it, posting this internally and then reflecting on it uh, next school year to see its success. Um, I know we shared already uh, about a month ago, a bit less than that, about this position, but are there any questions or things you're, you're interested in it? Question. 
for this position, I think you said it would be a licensed teacher, correct? Correct, yes. The, the core competencies of this seem a little bit different than you know, a typical classroom teacher. Is that correct? Like, is it going to take a special person to Yes, I mean you can speak a little yeah. bit out of it. Historically, a lot of our teachers have already been trained in a lot of these things. Uh, but I like these. Yeah, here. so um, this really um, seems like it would be different, but it's very common that teachers would have the skills necessary to do this. We've had different trainings that um, teachers go to, and some teachers are just more like interested towards this type of uh, competency. So. It just it feels different. So it shouldn't have you guys here that yeah, there's not like one person over there that could probably do this kind of We feel confident there's many people that would be interested possibly in mm -hmm. fill this position there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm sorry for hiding behind the post, but I wanted the position over there where I could see the door, but I have to sit here with my back to the door. I'm your first line of defense. Now this is going to be shoot me first. The sacrificial lamp, Jim. Give it to the old guy. You just had to ask Jim. Uh, all right, well, I'm up next. Uh, tonight I bring to you guys the Spectrum, our charter uh, enterprise contract. This is a 36 month. Uh, contract. Uh, it maintains our links from Yahara to the high school, as well as high school to Wisnet or the internet um, of the world. Uh, the no rate change since 2019, so this is basically con continuing that three-year contract that's expiring in June. Uh, this is for E-rate purposes. I bring it to you plus it's three years. Um, if you look at our bandwidth graphs for the last six months, that I include in the board weekly, we're not really seeing any major peaks where it's entire days. Uh, there was one in October where we were pretty thick pretty high. Um, this Thursday and Friday, we might hit that again. Luckily, the Badgers play Friday night. Um, not that there might be some sports on, but sometimes the boys tournament and the NCAA definitely gets some attention here in the district. So um, as well as when wrestlers get the stage as well. I believe when Favorite was at state, we had our highest uh, usage ever in the high school uh, that day. So, um, so tonight, I'm asking for that approval. Any questions? Second. Right. Steve and Kathy, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
lost my agenda. I think the next one is uh, yeah, DECA. Ahead. Thank you. Yep. Um, looking for approval for an overnight field trip for DECA. We had two students that qualified for nationals. I believe nationals is in Atlanta. Did it say that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It bounces back and forth. Sometimes it's in Anaheim. Um, in um, Atlanta this year, it's actually Kate Fox, who is up here uh, for basketball. That's not what she qualified for. This is DECA. <laughs> Uh, and Sylvia Fox, uh, both of them qualified, uh, so they get to represent us. So this is Sarah Ben Burkham. Sarah Ben Burkham runs this program, DECA, our marketing program, but we do need authorization because it's an overnight field trip, um, taking them. It's right in the middle of April, I believe, um, that they'll be heading down for their competition on actions. Yeah. All right, I'm uh, again excited to be here to talk about uh, a really awesome place, Sahara Valley Elementary School. And I know earlier Tad had mentioned, um, and you can step in Tad anytime you'd like, about uh, some money in the capital budget that we can use for something that is, I think, really important and, and necessary. Um, I'm not going to go too deeply into all of the classrooms. You have the slides. You can look at that. I'm just going to more share the story about why this is something that I feel is really important. So um, at this over the summer, I visited you here and, and recognized that we need we need some new furniture out there for our kids, uh, some furniture that is safe and some furniture that is really conducive to their learning. Um, so I know I shared this slide with you already uh, at, the, at the budget workshop with that picture and I know there was the big joke that we were going to put Jim's picture in there and, and Photoshop of that. That says Edgerton School grade 1 1965-1966 on the bottom and in one of our teachers classrooms those exact desks were in the classroom out at Yahara. Um, we've actually worked a little bit with community and replaced some of that furniture in that classroom because I didn't feel that it was safe but it is a testament to the care of the furniture that it was still usable uh, this school year. Um, so this project was more to, to update the furniture um, for the kids and the staff out at Yahara. Um, one, I'll get kind of into the uh, uh, some of the non-negotiables of the project, but I did want to maybe have been to Yahara in some time and just give you give you kind of a, a view of the school. Um, we do have six classrooms out at Yahara uh, with the addition of, of kindergarten this year, um, and thanks to Alice, we were actually able to. Um, furnish the kindergarten class with one of the section furniture from community. Uh, so that we did take that into account when we kind of went out for a quote for this, but uh, um, we do have some really great furniture out there for a kindergarten class. You also heard in the capital budget uh, an item that was uh, about widening a door in the gym for storage. Uh, currently, the gym floor is, is storage for a lot of things. So if you go out and you watch uh, Kelly Raymond teach gym class, there's a lot of stuff around the gym floor while kids are having gym. So widening that door, I don't know if you can see if I can move my mouse here, actually will allow us to get all of the lunch tables into that storage room and clear the gym floor so now that the gym will be open and, and just utilized for gym. So that is something that we're really excited about happening out of your hair up. Um, I do have some pictures of furniture in, in the classrooms here, and I, I want to put out a disclaimer. Um, when, when I zoom right in on it, it, it looks jarring, and it's not anyone's fault or anything. And I put a message out to the teachers that, hey, if, if, if you see a picture of your room, this is not a reflection on you, because the teachers, when you walk into Hera, you won't notice it, because they do such a really nice job. But when I zoom in on it and you look closely at it, um, you're like, oh, wow, yeah, that does need to be replaced. So uh, this is just an, an overview of the school. Um, so maybe you haven't been out there in some time. Uh, we are focusing with this money uh, from the capital budget on student furniture and classrooms. So there are some rooms that will not be uh, touched a lot. Um, I do have those, I do have that furnished when I presented to you guys in, in February, I said it'd be about $150,000. So there are some rooms that will not be touched that I have uh, looked into furnishing like the office. So like getting Barb a, a new desk and some new some new furniture in the office. Um, uh, and that, that won't be considered in this current thing. Right now I really wanna focus on getting the kids and the teachers 
the storage and the furniture that they need to, to have a successful school. So and I, and maybe it's hard to see real up close here, but um, I have four pictures there kind of around the outside of our current furniture. And it's really hard to see. And some of these things are dirty after Danny. And Danny does a great job out there scrubbing, but the tables have just been used so much uh, that it's very difficult to get the, the, them clean. And here is in a classroom where you'll notice we have just a mishmash of different furniture options for kids. Uh, and in another classroom, some of the kids' feet, and I, and I tried to get the little girl in there, her feet don't even touch the ground with the chairs that are offered in that, in that classroom space. Uh, we do have, and this is our, our, our first grade classroom where I was able to pull some furniture in. So I also wanted to give you the visual of what it can be. So uh, in our kindergarten room here, in a first grade room, we furnished them with pulling items from community out to Yahara. And the rooms that have the new furniture, they look great. Um, it's just a really nice option to have the new furniture out there. Um, I also wanted to show a really big issue that we have at Yahara is storage. Um, and that's actually the first thing that I noticed when I went out there. Like some of the storage options, you notice like uh, Boeing in the in the furniture, uh, the teacher desks that are quite old uh, and ready to be replaced, or like the cabinets don't quite close, or chairs that teachers are sitting in uh, that are just ready to be replaced. Um, and again, I want all the teachers to know that these are not personal. These are just pictures of the furniture that we have uh, out at Yahara. I wanted to kind of go over the timeline. So I went out there this summer, uh, you know, new guy, new lens out in the school. And I met with Tad and said, hey, like, I think some of this furniture is ready to be replaced. What should we do? So Tad connected me with EBI, um, the, the company that furnished the community in the, the referendum. And EBI came out and they measured all of our rooms uh, and they gave us initial drawings and quotes for the school. Um, through September and October, I went through like many revisions. Uh, okay, we want this, we want this. Like I said, Let's, let's look at getting everything possible for you here. And that's kind of where I had that $150,000 number that I gave you at the last one. Um, then I went through and said, okay, now we need some storage for the school. And we, she gave us a lot of different things. In December and January, I shared all of this uh, to our staff and said, here's what I have so far. Um, now I need you to go through and, and make improvements to this. So they had about two months uh, to get feedback and you know we went back and forth maybe two or three times on feedback draft feedback draft uh, and then February here uh, we had the final selections uh, and here I am tonight presenting to you uh, there were some non-negotiables uh, as we were kind of selecting furniture one of them is that I wanted it to match or be as similar because we purchased that three years ago some of the things had gone out of stock or they didn't make them anymore in that in that natural timeline of you know companies updating their furniture so i wanted it to match or be as close as i possibly could to the furniture here for custodial and maintenance needs like if we have a part for a chair you know we could interchange that without any issues um i wanted consistency as much as possible between classrooms out at yahara so if you could walk into a first grade room or a, a second grade room a one two room or a three four room it would have a a, a kind of a uniform look uh, between the building. Uh, and then I also wanted it to have consistency between equivalent grades in town. So if you were a kindergartner in town, the furniture that you had was consistent with the furniture out in one, two, three, four, all the way up to fifth grade. So there was consistency between the equivalent grades in, in the two schools. And that kind of gets us into what the furniture is. And if you are here through the referendum, a lot of this stuff uh, looks identical to what we had um, when we did the, the referendum in 2018. So I, I don't feel like I need to go through this, but it's you can you have the slides uh, and you can look at all the furniture options that we're really excited about, you know, what we're able to offer and bring to you uh, for approval on the 11th tab on the 11th. Um, what questions do you guys have or things you're wondering about? So what's the timeline if we, if we go forward with, with this or, or yes? Um, 
what the timeline is getting us stuck. And yes. So, so the, the turnaround time is, is longer. That's why it would be, it'd be really important on the 11th if we decide yes or no. That would get us to like a July delivery time for it. Yeah. And, and, and Barb, is, Barb is the lady from EBI who I've been working with, is pretty confident that she gave us that date as a time. Like, hey, if you need it for next school year, this is when you would need to put it in. So. So She's confident in the delivery, if that makes sense. So what is, what is it that you're going to be asking for for next year? Okay. So what I'm asking for is classrooms. Okay. Yep. So you'll see things like the, the actual quote that we're, we're getting will be just classrooms. All the classrooms. Yep. And, and with the exception of kindergarten. It's already got some stuff. Yeah. Correct. But kindergarten, we are asking. So if you see, like, I'm going to go back to kindergarten. Um, there are some things like these storage units um, that we will be asking for for kindergarten, but not all of the, the chairs and things. So we have eight sections of kindergarten furniture here in town, and we've just moved one of them to Yahara. But here in town, they have built-ins in the walls, which we do not have at Yahara. So we still need, like, this has an arm, like a teacher, a spot for them to hang their coats. Uh, filing cabinets, and um, there are some teaching materials that you want to close in a, in a cupboard. So we will be asking for, like, really to have a, cha a nice chair and a desk. So, but the student chairs and tables that from here we're bringing out to you here. Okay. Did you say that there was one, um, one two classroom that is on Yeah, but that's actually furnished from an intermediate classroom, and, and so we have, and I want that to come back because we have only we have five sections currently and I would if we're, there's a bubble ever coming yeah, that, yeah. that would be tricky to yeah because the furniture for the one two classroom is actually intermediate furniture and we've lowered it all of the way for the one two classroom okay yeah and you're looking at um, teacher desks and the student desks and the storage correct outfitting the class correct okay. mm -hmm. Thousand out of originally it said 150. Yeah, so that's removing things like um, so there's a principal's office out there that I, I had a principal desk and chair and a conference table and things that let's I want to focus right on like making sure the kids and the teachers have and and lounge. For, uh, well, I guess my question is that that final number is still 150 then, or did you correct me? So it, it would still be if you if we outfitted everything in the school. Like, so the stage, for example, I, there are desks on the stage and a kidney table. That's used by reading, like reading core and a few things. That's not essential right right now. So Ted in the capital budget had like, I forget the exact number, 95,000 or something. For that, we can outfit every classroom. Phase one is everything to the right of the hallway to the north, I mean to the left. Except for the IMC and the STEM Center. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, so it, when I was talking about, so all the classrooms, basically they're gonna be uniform in the community. To the right, it just didn't fit the number. Alan and I met with the rep today. We can, we're very confident, we can do everything to all the classrooms. Mm -hmm. Like the, the STEM Center is ex would be an expensive add-on because there's a lot of storage that would go into that. Um, is it just um, relatively new? out there so the storage in it is not it's like but the storage in there is fine enough i guess for now um but in the future it would be something that we would want to address would there be any cost savings realized by not, not much skinning it down okay i just want to make sure we were come away my way yeah it's it's not as, as much as you would think Other questions? Awesome. Right up to Al. He's done I'll be back. Yeah. 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 Getting the data, working with staff, um, sales rep. Yeah, it's 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 needed. So I'm excited to come back again with the exact number on the 11th. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right, this is this is a recommendation. Um, <laughs> leave of absence. So this, this employee hasn't been with us long enough to qualify for a test.
more because there's an hourly threshold in that world of events. So we've done this previously. Even if they don't qualify, we still give them the opportunity to take a leave of absence as if they were on that This happened maybe once every couple of years. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Eric and Leah, all in favor? Aye. 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 We have some letters of retirement. We're speaking of the hammer, and, and we're going to use two longtime staff members who certainly be difficult to replace out there. Joe Buckles as the special ed teacher, and Ann Schmelling as the support staff out there, both very beloved and to be difficult to replace. We are in the process of actually posting and working on that now. We have two letters of resignation, Jessica Polk as high school ESP and Emily Benor as the African speaking language. Um, Jessica on March 7th would be the effective date and Emily June 9th. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi. Hi. Okay. And we have three gifts. We have $2,000 from Edgerton Gear to the high school to um, support the Edgerton Gear Scholarship, 3000 from Lloyd and Canberg for the uh, high school to fund the student scholarships, and then $1,000 from Mary and I to the Wortman Series to be divided for five performances next year. Second. Kelly. Steve. Uh, Jim. Kelly and Jim. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, great. That's got us to the bottom of the agenda. We do have a uh, closed session. We'll give you a couple minutes here. Give us the rule. Actually, te technically, we have to go to the last closed session and it needs right. to be a roll call. We'll do okay. it then. We take 10 minutes once for it. Yeah. And then we're going to like, all right, come on. Let's take it down the chair. <laughs> Second. And Jeremiah. Okay, Steve Dowell. Yes. Brandon Farrell. Yes. Jeremiah Johnson. Yes. Yes, Klein, yes. Kelly Kukowski, yes. Liam Mays, yes. Derek Nemmer, uh, Jim Raymond, yes. um, Matt Towns, yes. And Good evening, everybody. Good night.